The Temperature Interval Scan Measurement Program measures CD spectra at specified temperatures. To set up your parameters, either click the Parameters icon or go to Measure – Parameters. The Parameters menu box will now pop up and the first tab selected will be Temperature. This tab allows you to specify the temperature settings for the measurement. The Start Temperature specifies the starting and ending temperatures of the measurement. Begin by choosing an ending temperature slightly above either the melting point or when the temperature plateaus. Data Interval determines the temperature intervals that the CD spectrum will be acquired at. The Temperature Gradient defines how quickly the temperature will increase every minute. If this is your first temperature scan study, 5 degrees per minute is a good starting point. The Wait Time is the period before the next temperature scan measurement begins. This time is dependent on how long it will take your sample to equilibrate if you are performing a subsequent measurement on the same sample. The control sensor selects the sensor for controlling the temperature, which can either be the cell holder or the temperature probe in the cell. The monitor sensor is the current temperature of either the cell holder or the temperature probe in the cell. Prior to starting the measurement, you can either select to keep the temperature within a specific range of the starting temperature for a certain amount of time, or start the measurement after the temperature crosses the target temp for a specified number of times. Once the measurement is complete, you can either return the temp to the start temperature to check if the sample can refold, keep the temperature at the end temp, or move the temperature to a specified temp. Selecting Halt Temperature Ramping will stop the temperature change during the measurement. Selecting Reverse performs a reverse measurement after an increasing temperature measurement. The hold time is the amount of time before the reverse measurement begins. The General tab allows you to specify how many photometric modes will be measured, along with their settings. You can select up to four channels where the data will be acquired simultaneously. CD is the Circular Dichroism Signal. LD is the Linear Dichroism Signal. CD over DC is the same as the CD signal when DC is set to 1 volt. This mode is useful when the DC varies with the sample absorption and the HT is fixed. UV single converts the DC signal to either absorbance or percent transmittance. Both the HT and DC modes monitor the photomultiplier tube voltage. HT is the high tension voltage and controls the gain. Gain is the amount of current output for the number of photons reaching the detector. When a lot of light hits the detector, the gain and therefore the HT are low. The less light throughput, the fewer the photons reaching the detector, and the higher the HT and larger the amplification of the signal. DC compensates for the change in the light level. When the DC drops, the HT adjusts the gain to increase the DC output. The start and end fields determine the wavelength range for the measurement. Secondary structure measurements are obtained between 185 to 250 nanometers, while tertiary structure information is acquired between 250 to 350 nanometers. The data pitch determines the number of data points collected at the specified interval. 0.1 nanometers is a good interval to start with and should provide a spectrum with an optimal signal-to-noise ratio. Selecting too small of a data pitch and you might obtain a spectrum with a lot of noise, but too large of a data pitch and crucial data points could be missed. The start mode allows you to immediately obtain a CD spectrum or wait for an external trigger. JASCO offers three scanning modes. The continuous scan acquires a CD signal at each wavelength while moving across the desired wavelength range. Step scan stops the monochromator at each wavelength to obtain a CD signal. The step scan takes much longer to acquire a CD spectrum than the continuous scan mode. The scanning speed is the speed at which the data is collected. 50 nanometers per minute is a good scan speed to begin with. The accumulations are the number of spectrum obtained and averaged together. The more accumulations, the better the signal to noise of the spectrum. The CD scale is the limit at which a CD signal can be obtained, and the fluorescence scale is the limit at which a fluorescent signal can be obtained. The DIT is the digital integration time or the response time. The longer the integration time, the better the signal to noise. Again, a good starting point for selecting the DIT is 4 seconds. 
The bandwidth determines how much light reaches the sample. The smaller the bandwidth, the less light throughput and the lower the signal to noise, but you can achieve better peak resolution. However, since CD peaks are broad, 1 to 2 nanometer bandwidth is fine. Now we can click on the control tab. Here you can select whether you would like to correct your CD spectrum with a baseline spectrum. Keep in mind that if you choose to correct with a baseline, you will only have the corrected sample spectrum, not the raw sample spectrum. You can also choose to open and close the shutter automatically, or close the shutter in between measurements so that the sample will not be irradiated when a measurement is not being obtained. The Information tab allows you to populate the desired fields such as sample name, concentration, and solvent. These comments can also be displayed in the Comments dialog box before the sample measurement. All information provided here can be later viewed in the Information tab in Spectra Analysis for each spectrum. The Data tab allows you to select whether to automatically save your data, as well as to specify which folder to save it to and the format the file is saved as. Saved data can be sent directly to Spectra Analysis once the measurement is finished, and the data can also be printed. You can also save your measurement parameters, as well as open previously saved parameter files. After clicking OK, you can now select wavelengths to monitor the temperature dependence of the sample at. Go to the menu bar and click Measure, Monitor Parameters. Four wavelengths can be entered, but they have to be within the previously specified wavelength range. Click OK and begin the measurements by selecting the sample measurement icon.